Hello and good evening all. It's good to be here. As you know, it's 8 p.m. UK time, so it is time to start our live event. And as you can see, we have two special guests tonight. As you can see, uh, you are definitely familiar with Dr. Laura Garcia from Tamara Clinic. Hello, Dr. Laura. How are you today? Hello, very well. How are you doing? I'm very happy that you are here again. And of course, as you probably also know, we have another special guest and that is Josh Rockstraw, and he is from Phenomatch. He's the uh, owner of the Phenomatch, and we already had a webinar with Josh, if you remember. If not, you will have a chance to uh, to hear what he's uh, prepared with Dr. Laura today as well. And Josh, how are you feeling? Hope I'm, all is good. I'm very well, thank you, Caroline. All is good over here. Very happy to hear that, and I am so happy to see you both here. We do not do it that many times uh, when it comes to two presenters. I'm very, very excited to, to see what you have prepared. And uh, well, everyone, as you know, all the Stronger Together events have been brought to you so we can give you a chance to uh, meet top fertility experts, but also uh, different uh, experts on different topics. Today, the topic is finding the right donor when donation is anonymous, so indeed very interesting topic. Thank you so much to both of you already for that topic, for bringing that topic. And uh, well, as you know, we will start with um, presentation, okay? And after that, it will be time for your questions. So as always, please type those questions in the chat section so that uh, either Josh or Dr. Laura will be able to help you with those. And uh, let me just mention that uh, all the events have been brought to you thanks to our ambassadors and partners. You can see them here. And well, thank you so much for their support. And as I mentioned, we will definitely start with uh, Josh first, and then Dr. Laura will go ahead with her part of the presentation. Uh, so stay tuned. And well, I guess we can begin, right, Josh? Yes, that's right. I'm ready. All right. Thank you so much. Go ahead. Okay, then. Thank you. So, yes, uh, as our host Caroline said, this is Josh from Phenomatch. And I'd like to thank everybody for attending because I know your time is important and I hope this talk is useful for you. Um, so, the structure here is going to be I'm going to talk a little bit about Phenomatch and our facial matching uh, algorithm for donors and patients and a little bit about what we do and how it works. And then I will pass you over to Dr. Uh, Laura Garcia from Tambre, and that's a Spanish clinic that we work with here in Madrid, and she is an expert. And yeah, like Caroline said, at the end of this, we're going to be answering some questions. And this is an absolutely fantastic time to ask uh, a doctor anything you want uh, related to treatment with IVF, especially related to sperm donation, and especially related to, to egg donation as well, because I know that's something that uh, Dr. Garcia does a lot. Perfect. This is my second webinar, as Caroline said, so hopefully I'm not going to be repeating anything too much that you uh, already know. If you've seen my last one, I talked about Phenomatch as well. Um, so I'll just do a quick summary. Uh, for those of you who don't know, I think a lot of the time, you know, because what we do is uh, artificial intelligence, we do a lot of talks with companies that are doing research, companies that are doing development. Um, and I don't get to talk very often with clinics that are actually up and working. I know that Tambre, they have 40 years experience, uh, more or less 40 years experience as a clinic. Uh, Phenomatch is a company. We've been uh, operating in clinics since 2018. And our first Phenomatch babies were born around May 2019. There's currently around 100 clinics that, uh, that use our facial matching software to find a donor for patients. And we've helped around, uh, well, more than 7,000 families so far in the last uh, couple of years since we started in 2018. That's something that we are very proud of, of course. Uh, so, like I said, just in case you didn't see the last webinar, what we have is a, a platform that allows clinics to find egg donors and sperm donors. 
And I'm going to talk a little bit about how we do that. Essentially, what makes our platform special is our facial matching technology. And this is phenomatch based. So what that means is we look for facial features which are inherited through our DNA. And of course, the objective is uh, to have donor-assisted children that have a greater facial resemblance to their parents. So um, let's carry on then. So I, I suspect or I expect that most people are here either because they are choosing a donor or soon they'll be choosing a donor or they're choosing a clinic at the moment and maybe they're looking for one that has a phenomatch uh, or because, you know, in the case where donation is anonymous, like in Spain or Greece or in countries like the UK or Germany where you don't have much, ac to, much access to information on the donors, you're put into a situation where you're making a very important decision, essentially the, the genetic or uh, biological parent of your child, and you have insufficient information to make that decision. And that's what causes so much stress, basically. Um, unknown variables and the importance of this decision related to your child. So, of course, there are two ways that we can fix this. The first is to make the, less, the decision less important, but that's not really possible. It's always going to be a very important decision. However much you try to rationalize it and however much you try not to worry about it, it's, it's an important decision. And so the second way is to get as much information as possible. And I don't need to tell you this, of course, because everyone here has come because they're doing their research, because they're working really hard, because they're investigating. And that's fantastic. Phenomatch was designed to give more information to the doctors that are choosing the donors. Okay. So uh, here's how we do it. Firstly, you can search by the industry standard criteria. So, for example, you can search for things like eye color, hair color, hair type, ethnicity, of course, uh, skin tone, height, uh, body type, but not weight, of course, because body type is something phenotypic and weight is something that can obviously vary throughout your life depending on factors that are not genetic. Uh, those are the industry standard criteria, so that's something that most clinics do. Uh, the clinics like Clinic Atambre in Madrid, which have uh, facial matching, we can also uh, use this technique where we analyze uh, a map of the uh, patient's face and compare it with the potential donors. And like I said, it works with egg or sperm donors, so we can use photographs of men uh, or women. And it works with heterosexual and homosexual couples. So it doesn't matter if you are a male or a female, and it doesn't matter if you're looking for an egg or a sperm donor. So the doctors can then use that alongside the other criteria, which might include things like um, genetic testing, etc. And just to be clear, this is something that Dr. Laura is going to help us a lot with in her part of the talk. Um, but yeah, essentially what we do is we give a little more information to the doctor uh, in terms of the phenotypic characteristics to help find the right donor. So on a practical level, what do you need? Well, we just need a photograph of your face. It helps if your hairline is visible and if your face is relaxed, so no smiling. And if you have minimum makeup and jewelry and no glasses, um, what was the one thing I wanted to say here? Yeah, this essentially is what we're looking for as a passport photograph. Okay, so looking straight into the camera, uh, relaxed face, which means no smiling. And this is the same uh, as what you need for a passport. And that's because passports uh, and passport photographs, they do something very similar to what we do, because that, of course, is facial recognition. What we do goes a little further, because what we do is facial matching, but the ingredients is the same. What we need is a photograph of your face where the phenotype is uh, clearly visible. 
Things like if you have a beard or not, and uh, if the donors have a beard, that's not something we take into account because, of course, you can shave beards. What we look for is the structure of the face. And in fact, I have a uh, an image in the next slide, which I'm going to show you. And those of you who've seen my uh, previous presentation will have, have already seen this one, but I just love it because it's such a great photograph. Um, it's two people that look very similar, uh, in fact, because they share genetic material. And so they have a similar phenotype. And so if you look very closely, you might be able to see some similarities, even if you're not a doctor, even if you have no medical training. Let's see if we can go there. Okay. So this is my mum and my brother, and this was taken uh, pre-COVID, of course, at my brother's wedding last year. And if you look, you should be able to see the shape of the nose and also uh, the hairline, the, the, the hairline that we have, and also the teeth and the smile. These are all facial similarities which have a genetic basis. So when we take that photograph of the patient, and create that map, that is basically what we're looking for. We're looking for that degree of uh, facial similarity. Okay, um, so that's more or less everything I have to say. Uh, I will be here, of course, for the question and answers. So if there's anything you want to ask me, I will, of course, be very happy to, to help. I love talking about Phenomatch. I think it's a fantastic product. So any questions at all are very welcome. This is obviously also a fantastic chance to ask questions to uh, Dr. Garcia from uh, Tamre Clinic, mm -hmm. who I think might have uh, be able to give you some answers that I'm not able to. Uh, just to give her a brief introduction, she has around 10 years experience um, and she is the medical director of the clinic at uh, Tambre. They have a large number of international patients and they're used to dealing with you know, English language and other languages. Uh, they were one of the first clinics to work with Phenomatch, so we're very happy with them and we have a great relationship with them. And they tend to do, uh, obviously, sperm donation. That's something that's fairly common in all clinics. They do a lot of treatment with egg donation as well. That's something they're quite well known for and quite respected for. So, uh, Dr. Garcia, are you ready? Uh, Josh. Hi, are you ready? Yeah, sure. Perfect. So, over to you. Okay, so... Let's start with uh, the part of Tamre Fertility Clinic. We are a clinic that have more than 40 years of experience and we have our own in-house cryobank for eggs and sperm. We meet all Spanish and European legislation and we have the latest technology available in the laboratory such as Gary time-lapse incubator, genetic diagnostic, genetic matching, and of course, we treat each patient as an individual case. Let's move to this slide, how donor selection is based in Spain. It is completely anonymous regarding our law. And we take into consideration the physical characteristics of the recipient, the blood type, the facial resemblance of court carried out with Phenomatch technology and doctor-patient communication because this is uh, really you know important for this type of treatments especially when this is anonymous we really need to take care of you and select the best um, donor not only regarding physical characteristics but also in a general aspect to make you feel sure and relax that everything is going to be okay also, if it is necessary because of implantation failure or repetitive miscarriage, if we need to select uh, OPLA C1C1, because I'm analogically this is necessary, that also will be done. And if you would like to do it, it is also possible to do the genetic compatibility testing for the status mutation of recessive mutations for more than 300 genetic tests. How do we work? 
we give a pen uh, questionnaire so it is a uh, important document that is in our concern for egg donation or um, sperm donation treatments and patients need to fill out the following questionnaire and also we ask a photograph as just command before this can be taken at the clinic to perform the facial matching or if people is living abroad our patients they can just send via email for the mass accurate results as Josh said before we need to look straight into the camera don't smile and make sure your hairline is visible and remove glasses jewelry and have the minimum makeup in your face it's a very common question from my patients that uh, they ask me if they can send different photographs because it's quite difficult to find you you know okay in only one photograph and also if they can share with us uh, photos of their own children or of other treatments also grandmother mother so of course we are very happy to have all these uh, photographs and all this information If we focus in egg donation, our selection criteria, we need to select women less than 35 years old regarding our law, but mainly we select only less than 30 years old. The minimum height is 1 meter 55, and maximum uh, body mass index is 30. We have the first step with our nurse and it is very important to exclude medical conditions backgrounds in their family and we explain in that consultation the process of egg donation so how it's going to be we're going to explain that they need to come a lot of times to the clinic possible secondary effects and also we to explain that in our clinic the process is extremely important and we recommend and ask them to come to administrative medication every day in our clinic. If we accept the conditions of the donors, if everything is okay, then we move to the second step and we organize the interview with our psychologist. The psychologist is going to take around one hour and 30 minutes to have a direct interview with them to confirm that everything is okay, there are no mental pathologies, there are no abnormalities in personality, and that the lifestyle is normal, it's okay. Also, she will give her a written interview that she will have the opportunity to review all the results and be sure that everything is okay from this perspective. And the last step if everything is all right and we accept this candidate, we start with a medical test. We do a general health research with complete blood count, blood type, biochemistry, the glucose 6-phosphate and serologies such as cytomegalovirus, HIV, syphilis, hepatite B, hepatite C and others. We focus also in gynecological tests such as ultrasound with the count of follicles smear tests, vaginal cultures for chlamydia and other pathologies. And then we move to the genetical tests, including karyotype and the 15 important recessive mutations that our law needs to confirm that they are not carriers, such as X fragile, cystic fibrosis, muscular atrophy, beta thalassemia, etc. And of course, we confirm the status carrier test of the more of 300 genes, as I said before, if the couple, the patient, wants to do genetic matching with that donor. We move to the next slide, and right now we'll talk about sperm donation, sperm donors. Again, selection criteria regarding age, it's less than 35. Regarding height, it's 1 meta 70 centimeters and body mass index 30. The first step is to have the consultation with the andrology team carried out by a biologist. 
and we will exclude that there are no medical conditions, no backgrounds in their families. So we can confirm that we're not going to transmit any pathology with the sperm. And of course, we will explain the process, the time they need to come and everything. And the last step, it's the medical test. And we will do, again, general health research, such as complete blood count, blood type, biochemistry, the glucose, 6-phosphate, serologies again. We will also review that everything looks normal regarding sperm and andrological tests. So we'll do spermogram complete, sperm and urine culture, and PCR for chlamydia. And if that okay we will move to the last part of the genetic test we will do a carry time to confirm normality for chromosomes we'll do the five recessive mutations including cystic fibrosis uh, beta thalassemia muscular atrophy etc and again we will check the status mutation for more than 300 genetic tests So at our clinic, we have more than 2,500 samples available in our bank, including a wide range of phenotypes, not only Caucasian, not only Spanish, European donors, but also Asian, black donors. And we always use facial matching provided by Phenomatch because this gives us really uh, tranquility to confirm that the process regarding physical characteristics and physiognomy is going to be okay all right and perfect and uh, we don't have waiting lists for treatment with donations so that's something that it's very appreciated by all our patients here we have a comment done by a couple that was a patient recently in our clinic. So Henrik and Ronald, I will read the comment. They said, uh, our families love our baby more than anything. My parents and aunts think that she looks extremely like me. They put baby photos of me and my daughter next to each other and emphasize the resemblance. She's like just like her mother. Also, my aunt told me the other day that there is a great resemblance to my grandfather. I wouldn't have thought of it, but she feels it that way. So this is not a unique comment. This is not something, you know, very rare. I have lots of patients, friends, families, relatives that have uh, done a treatment with egg donation or sperm donation, and they can never imagine in the beginning of the process how is going to be the resemblance with uh, their uh, children, with their child. So thanks a lot for your time, for attending this presentation, and uh, we'll continue with Phenomatch technology, giving our best to all our patients. And Wonderful. Thank you so much to both of you for your presentation, for explaining how it works. So as you can see, we can see a few questions here. So of course, now it is time for our Q&A session. So just if you have anything that you would like to ask either Josh or Dr. Laura, just go ahead and type those in. And uh, well, are you ready for the questions? Yes. yes, we're ready. That's an excellent. So let me go ahead with the first one. I guess this one, yes, it is. Will be this will be for Dr. Laura. So in your presentation, you have that. Yes. So why is there a selection criteria at one point fifty five uh, centimeters minimum when it comes to height? I guess for the donor, right? Yeah. So thanks a lot for this um, interesting question. So it's to you know, just confirm a limit regarding the height. It's extremely rare to have a recipient that it's uh, less than this height. And of course, if it will have, you know, a recipient that it's really shorter than 1.55, of course, we will select another donor if necessary. But the majority of women in Europe, in our uh, you know, countries that are applying for treatments close to our clinic, 
they don't have a height less than 1.55. And you know that um, have uh, you know height that it would um, that it's uh, shorter. It could be you know regarding genetical conditions and no problems. But of course, it also could lead if it's really shorter to any medical problem. So that's the reason why. All right. Thank you so much for the question and, of course, for your answer to that. And actually, um, there is a follow-up, just additional information. Thanks for your answer. I'm 1.53. So this is interesting. Okay. Well, understood. Thank you so much for that. All right. And next question will be for Josh. Okay. So as with regards to Phenomatch, how do, as a, as a patient, know which clinics use your technology? Uh, thank you for your question, Jill. Uh, basically, the, the best thing to do is ask. Um, if you go to, to a clinic, they'll be able to tell you what uh, methods and what techniques they do for, for donor selection. Another option that you can do is if you go to eggdonationfriends.com. Uh, on that website, you can search for clinics and it will tell you if Phenomatch is available or not. And I think that's European-wide, Caroline. I think you might be able to help me out here. Sure, of course. Uh, it's also possible. You can always drop us an email and we will be more than happy to help you out. You can, I will put you, send you an email in a minute as well, of course. So you can do that, definitely. All right. Thank you so much. And next question is also interesting. So what kind of photo do you request from an intended mother? Does it have to be a current photo or a photo of me when I was young? Yeah, Josh. Uh, I'll take this one. Yes. Thank you, M. Thank you for your question. Um, for the phenomatch process, we need a photograph of you as an adult because that is when we can see the fully developed facial features. Um, so that works best when we're doing the phenomatching with the artificial intelligence. However, um, as Dr. Garcia said, if you're at a uh, Tambre clinic, you can send them as many photos as you want. You can send them photographs of yourself, photographs of yourself as a child. You can send photographs of uh, other children that you already have. And all of that can be taken into account as criteria. Dr. Garcia, is that correct? Anything to add? That's perfect answer. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> That's good. All right. So wonderful. Thank you so much for that question indeed. And of course, for your help with this. Next question, definitely a question to Dr. Laura. So is your treatment done with fresh donor eggs or frozen? So thanks a lot for this uh, question. The majority of our treatments are done with fresh um, eggs. But of course, we also have our own bank. So people that really need to organize a treatment, organize the exact day of the embryo transfer, we can also do it with frozen eggs. And again, thank you so much for uh, that, of course, and your answer to this next one will be a bit of a longer question. So perhaps this is a strange question, but I am Filipino Caucasian. I am between considering a clinic in Spain and one in Ukraine. There seems to be a little more liberty in sperm donor selection in Ukraine. Am I able to request a Spanish Caucasian sperm donation given my multiracial background provided the phenotypes too much at the clinic in Spain? So thanks a lot for this uh, question. And of course, it's not a rare case. I have lots of um, patients, especially from France and also UK, that are you know mixed from different um, ethnicities. So our law considers that we really need to give the best candidate, not only in terms of ethnicity, but also in terms of physical characteristics. As I was telling before, we are really flexible and we really enjoy talking and communicating with our patient. So of course, I had in my past um, black uh, recipients asking for white as a donor. And I was always telling that it was not permitted in my country as long as I had black donors in my clinic. In your case, which is more specific and of course, I'm always very honest with my patients and it's extremely rare to have in a sperm bank, a Filipino Caucasian 
um, donor, of course, we will be flexible and of course, we will select the best, perhaps the best uh, candidates is a Caucasian and not a uh, Filipino or Asian. Okay, so that's something that really can be taken into consideration. So it's not only ethnicity, but as I said before, you know, color of eyes, color of hair, um, the physiognomy done by Phenomat. So it's really a global process and not only regarding ethnicity. And wonderful. Again, thank you so much for your question and your thorough explanation to that as well. Next one, I guess it will be for Josh, right? So does it take longer to find an egg donor if you use Phenomatch? What happens if the match fails? Okay, uh, thank you for the question, uh, Sarah. Uh, does it take longer to find an egg donor if you use Phenomatch? Uh, the short answer is no. The Phenomatch process, because it's done with artificial intelligence, is actually much quicker. Because, you know, like uh, Dr. Garcia said in their clinic, I think there's over 2,000 uh, samples. Is that right? Yeah. Yes. So, you know, for a doctor to go through that many donors uh, would take a very long time. With Phenomatch, um, a lot of that process can be done very quickly. Uh, so the answer is no. And what happens if the match fails? Um, it's not really a, f you know, a failure or a success. Uh, all Phenomatch does, and this is important to, to be aware of, all Phenomatch does is give a score based on facial resemblance. And then it is the doctor's decision uh, to decide if that score is, is, is good enough or not, or if the facial resemblance is good enough or not. Just like with all the other factors, essentially this is something your doctor can help you with and you should be able to speak to your doctor about. All right, excellent. Once more, thank you for that. Okay, next question is, so is Phenomatch also considering the intellectual matching? Um, we do, you can search by education level, which is uh, not exactly the same as, as uh, intelligence or intellect, but it's definitely a good way of, of measuring that. And I believe, Dr. Garcia, you also do some psychological tests, is that correct? Yeah, so at this point it's not matching, okay, so it's, as Jobs was uh, commenting, it's the confirmation if the candidate is, you know, good to be a donor or not. Um, so it's not really a question of intellectual matching in terms of likes or whatever, it's more a confirmation for each candidate if they have normal personality, a minimum intelligence, of course, so that will be carried out with our psychologists. Excellent. Thank you so much once again. Okay, there are like three questions left for now. So I just want to remind everyone that if you have anything else that you would like to ask, go ahead and type those in. And the question is for Dr. Uh, Laura, is, so is the criminal background for donors also checked? So thanks a lot for this question. And at this point, let me inform you that the majority of our donors, they are, you know, extremely honest and they just come to our clinic. They really want to help people. They know, you know, uh, via, you know, Facebook or the, you know, the, the whatever, that this is really a problem for some persons some humans to have children with their own sperm or their own, or their own donors. So that's something that it's not really, you know, related with the compensation in terms of financial issues. So it's more to do with help and, um, you know, to, to really help other people to have this. So, of course, if they have some problems, our psychologists will reveal that. Majority of them, they are just telling the truth and they are just reporting the, if they have had some problems not only regarding criminal but also other issues such as i don't know um problems such as um you know uh, disorders for alimentation and this kind of problems so the psychologist will confirm 100 percent that everything is all right and we can work and uh, you know do the donation with that candidate all right, wonderful. Thank you so much. And of course, there's a thanks from 
the patient for your help with it. Excellent. Thank you so much. And let's go to the next question for Josh. So can phenomatch technology be used also with non-anonymous donors? Uh, thank you, Erwin. Yes, of course. Uh, Phenomax technology, you know, it was built and designed in Spain to solve the very specific problem uh, because in Spain, the patients can't see the photographs of the donors. Uh, however, as you say, Phenomax technology can be used with, with, as long as we have a photograph of the adult face of the donor, we can use it. Excellent. Thank you so much. And if I may actually ask, so do you already work with such clinics where it's possible to have non-anonymous donors? Uh, I believe so, yes. Although right. there are very few clinics in the world where the donors are completely non-anonymous. Even in right. you know countries like England, you don't really get uh, that much information at the time of the uh, when the donation is made, when the treatment is being done. All right, understood perfectly. Thank you so much, of course, for this once again. And let's have a look at the next question. This one is for Dr. Laura. So I am interested to know what has the best IVF rights, frozen or fresh egg donation? So this is a very interesting question. And uh, if we can, you know, reveal the literature, it's not 100% clear about that. So. Usually the best uh, success rates are with fresh eggs, but it's more to do also with, you know, the um, egg donor. We have extremely good um, donors that works uh, very, very well with fresh donation. And by contrast, when we work with their frozen eggs, they do not work um, correctly at all in terms of development of the embryos. So for the frozen, you really need to confirm with your clinic that the thawing of the eggs will be guaranteed, the number of minimum of eggs, because this is the important you know, um, process with frozen. And there is a slight more tendency of uh, biochemistry miscarriage if we talk about frozen. Definitely, if we need to do genetic screening of the embryos, the answer is 100% sure fresh egg donors. All right, again, thank you so much for your question and as always for explaining uh, this to us as well. And next question again, quite interesting. So would the doctor share the phenomat resemblance score of the chosen egg donor? Yeah, this is a good question. Thank you, Gemma. Um, it's an interesting one. Doctors, doctors can share as much information um, as, as they feel is relevant for you because it's not identifying data. One of the reasons that um, patients have to be careful when knowing the phenomatch resemblance score is that everybody wants, you know, 100, I think. And if not 100, then they want 99. Uh, but in fact, if you uh, have a score of 99, it's likely that you're looking at two photographs of the same person. And if you have a score which is between 80 and 90, you could well be looking at uh, twins. And if you have a score that's between 70 and 80, you could be likely, likely looking at a photograph of your brother and sister. And you don't want to have children with those people for various reasons related to genetics, essentially. So um, that's one of the reasons why we tend not to talk about the precise mechanics of the score, because a doctor would tell you that a score of between 60 and 70 is a very good score. But for a patient, 60 to 70 sounds not good enough, essentially. Um, so my advice would be that you speak to your doctor about the specific case and make sure you're getting enough information. The thing is, is that without me knowing enough about your situation, your doctor, your history, your needs, your desires, uh, what your face looks like, I can't really uh, tell you properly and communicate exactly how the phenomatch score works. So <laughs> in summary, my answer is you should talk to your doctor about that. All right, indeed. Thank you so much. That's definitely interesting what you have said. And uh, well, thank you for explaining <laughs> how 
it well works as well all right um of course as you can see there are like two questions left so we will be slowly finishing however if you still have would like to have some uh sorry you would like to ask some more questions just go ahead and type those in and the question is right here so do you also offer an embryo donation if yes do you have asian embryos so I guess this question is more, uh, you know, for my answer. So uh, thanks for your question. And yes, we do have embryo donation. And uh, once you apply for embryo donation, we ask you to send your physical characteristics and we confirm if embryos that are already created are available in your bank. I can uh, remember, I think there were embryos in our bank that are mixed as the patient that was telling before that are half Asian and half Caucasian, but I would uh, need to confirm that in my data. All right, of course. Thank you so much once more for that answer. And at least for now, it looks like this will be our final question. And let's have a look. It will be for Dr. Laura. How about the success rate with making an embryo? Is there a difference between making an embryo with fresh or frozen sperm? Thank you so much. So thanks a lot for your question. Uh, very, very interesting. So at this point, if the sperm is absolutely normal, there are no difference if fresh or frozen. And our tendency, our recommendation is to work with frozen and that will confirm that everything is all right. We will not have you know, problems of last moment if there is a problem with the sample. And also, this also helps the clinic to be more flexible with the donor and all this. By contrast, if there is the oligoastinotyratodospermia, if we need specific technique in our laboratory, such as chip fertile, then fresh sperm, it's necessary. So what we always recommend is the first consultation with the advanced sperm test and freezing that sample. And if everything is all right, we will work with the frozen and we will you know, confirm that everything is absolutely fine by contrast if there are some problems, then we will just confirm what type of pre vitamins and pre-treatments you need to take, and we will ask you to come for the fresh sample the day of the egg retrieval. And again, thank you so much for your question and of course your answer to this. And well, next question is, so is Phenomatch an additional cost or is it included? So, Yes, Dr. Laura. Moment, uh, I can answer what we do in our practice, and it's always included in our treatments. There are no extra costs for this. All right, wonderful. And Josh, is there anything you can add? Because I guess it's up to the clinic in the end. Yeah, that's right. It's up to the clinic. Um, I think it really. I think most most clinics do tend to include it, uh, just because it's. It's a quite important service. I mean, obviously, in my opinion. Uh, but yeah, it depends on the clinic. Wonderful. Thank you so much for the clarification to this question. Um, next one is where are the donated embers coming from, Dr. Laura? Donors? Thanks a lot for this question. And the majority of embryos are coming from egg donation, but also it could um, be embryos that come from. Um, own IVF, but if coming from own IVF, so um, own ex, it's uh, necessary that woman is less than 35 years old. But usually, patient having IVF, they, you know, normally try to um, do as many transfers and as many childs as they can. With egg donation, you know, a lot of patients are a little bit, uh, you know, more in their 40s or 45s. So perhaps they want to transfer and have one or two childs. And if they have extra embry embryos, normally they donate to other people. So that's usually the origin, egg donation with uh, ounce sperm of uh, the um, uh, partner or double donation. And great. Thank you so much for that again as well. 
And as you can see, more questions are coming up, of course. So let's go ahead. And there is a thanks from the patient. And uh, next one is, I guess, also for uh, Dr. Uh, Laura. For how long have you been working with Phenomatch, Dr. Garcia? Uh, correct me, Josh, if I'm wrong, but I would say two years. More yes, than that's years. right. It must have been uh, 2018, because I know that you were one of the first ones, but I couldn't tell you the exact date. Yeah. All right. Thank you so much for the question and thank you for answering this one. And of course, let's have a look at the next one. And if the clinic doesn't offer Phenomatch, what's another way to check match with the egg donor? Uh, I'll take this question, I think. Sure. Um, so if the clinic doesn't offer Phenomatch, uh, there'll be a couple of things that most clinics do. Uh, so that will be things like uh, ethnicity, of course, skin tone, eye color, hair color, hair type, height, body type, uh, and a few other features like that. Um, so Phenomatch is different because instead of just selecting the eye color, uh, you can do the whole facial matching uh, thing with things like the jawline, the size and shape of the eyes and this kind of features. Uh, there are clinics that don't use Phenomatch that do that manually. Um, but you know, the advantage of Phenomatch is that if you have uh, many donors or many uh, samples, it's a way to get an objective, scientifically verified result. And it often uh, saves time, I think, for the doctors. All right. Thank you so much once again for explaining that and well ex next one is also i guess josh for you right so how can a clinic get access to to phenomatch uh, well i believe that my contact details will be shared with everyone so uh, we already work with around 100 clinics um around the world and i should say the majority of them are in europe although we're also in argentina in peru in brazil uh um, but yeah, send me an email is probably the quickest way. For a clinic to get access to Phenomatch, if the contract's assigned, uh, it just takes um, something like 24 hours to get the, the clinic signed up. Perfect. Once more, thanks for that. And next question for Dr. Laura. So in case of choosing neck donor, is it possible as a patient to choose as other clinic will be showing examples of donors? Is it good to make my own cho 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 sorry, choice choice, or the <laughs> clinic has to choose for me the egg donor? Well, thanks a lot, Christina. Unfortunately, in our country, it is absolutely necessary to do an animal selection. So if eventually you want to do um, a donation treatment with X from another bank, I can accept that as long as you have no um, idea of, you know, the resemblance and all this uh, image and selection of the donor. So if it is 100% anonymous, I can uh, accept that, but there is, it's not worth it because I cannot guarantee the success rates of uh, our treatments with that X that are not coming from our bank. And wonderful. Thank you so much once more for this question, and of course, explaining how it works. And someone is typing, so I just want to wait and see if we have another question. If not, we will be finishing for today. As for now, it's a thank you from the patient for answering the question. And yes, sorry, there is another question, of course, here. Possibly our last one. Give that phenom given that Phenomatch is only two years old, um, sorry, two years old, how do you define a successful match is given that most lifers would still be infants? Could this change as they become adults? Thank you very much, Maxine, for this question. And this is one of my favorite questions. Um, so, of course, we have not yet been able to do any testing of the Phenomatch babies because babies, uh, they tend to have those lovely chubby cheeks um, because their phenotype hasn't really uh, fully been developed. So how do we know that it works? That's a good question. Well, we trained the algorithm on uh, photographs of members of the same family. 
the initial training, and I'm talking about 2017, we used around 600 or uh, something around 600 um, photographs of individuals, and they were from 108 different families. So um, what we defined as a successful match is if the algorithm is able to identify members of the same family. Members of the same family, of course, have the same phenotype, and that's exactly what our algorithm looks for. Uh, a couple of weeks ago, and I, uh, yeah, this was at the beginning of this month, I did a test where I gave the algorithm uh, 600 random photographs, and uh, one of those photographs was of my brother. And then I compared them to, to my own face. And uh, I personally think my brother and I look very different. He's, uh, I have to say, quite a lot skinnier than I am. Um, but the algorithm was able to identify from a sample of 600 people um, the phenotypic, uh, the phenotype which was shared between us. And it takes a couple of seconds to do. So that's how we know that it works. And that's wonderful to hear. And definitely, it's impressive, I have to say. This is definitely interesting. Uh, so so thank you so much. And uh, we will be finishing for tonight. So I would already like to thank everyone for, your, for joining us tonight, for your questions, very interesting ones indeed. So thank you a lot for those. And of course, Dr. Laura, Josh, it's always good to have you here. I am glad that today we were able to be here, both of you at the same time. So we have two presenters. Thank you so much for answering all the questions and of course for your wonderful presentation. As always, it's great to have you. And as you can see, there are plenty of thank yous coming. We are way here as well. And well, uh, first maybe Dr. Laura, is there anything else you would like to add? Thanks a lot for this interesting webinar. And I hope you have to do it. All right, perfect. Josh, anything else you would like to add as well? Yes, thank you very much to Dr. Garcia, because I know how busy you are, and it's really great to be able to share this time with you. Thank you to Caroline for organizing this, and uh, thank you to our the people listening and watching at home. Remember that you're going to have my contact details, so if there's anything else you want to know, please get in touch. Wonderful. Thank you so much for that. And yes, you are right. I have sent the link. So of course, after the webinar is over, you are also able, you will be redirected. So if you would like to ask anything to Josh or Dr. Laura, you will be able to do so. And of course, uh, I just hope we will be able to have another webinar quite shortly, I'm sure here for sure and uh, I just want to also mention that uh, this has been recorded so as always it will be available tomorrow on our website my IV offenses and of course on our YouTube channel as well so if you missed any part you will have a chance to rewatch it and uh, well as you know there are plenty more events coming up so stay tuned and I hope to see you all tomorrow as well at 8 p.m. UK time we will be back and one more time Dr. Laura Josh, huge thanks. Have a lovely evening and uh, well, till our next time. Thank you all. Good night. Bye. Thank you very much. Goodbye. Bye. Bye. Bye.